Just picked up this Polaris Sportsman 500. As you can see, it's a bit rough. Comes with the plow though. Let's get this thing unloaded. Alright, as you can see this thing's pretty tough to move, so I don't know if the brake is stuck on. Oh yeah, duh, the parking brake was on. No wonder. <laughs> I pushed that the whole way with the parking brake on. That was a good workout. But uh, anyway, you can see it's pretty rough. Um, one of the racks is broken right here. Looks like something maybe fell on it. Um, we do have all the plastics for it in the car, so it'll look a little bit better when all the plastics are on it. You can see just like stuff like this has fallen off. Not a big deal there. The headlights like melted. Looks like maybe the bulb got too hot and melted it at one point. Um, and then same with the backlight. You can see like, it looks like it was melted at the top. So I don't know what's going on with the electrical here. But basically, I got this from a subscriber. He actually got it like a couple days ago and he was asking me questions on it and he was trying to get it to turn over with a different solenoid, so I helped him out and he actually got it to turn over, but he said there was no spark on it. So I'm like, well, you know, I can buy it from you. He can make a little money and then I can make a video. So I bought it from him, probably for a little bit too much, but that's okay. Um, I paid 1200 bucks for this thing. I kind of wanted to see if I could get this thing to go. I figured, you know, why not give it a shot and see if I can get it to run without, you know, putting too much money into it or having to, to go through too much work. So basically, everything works, except uh, it doesn't have sparks. So right now, um, you can see the neutral light lights up. Uh, the gauge turns on, it's got 1,224 miles on it, which is pretty low for this. Um, but it looks like the speedo gauge was off of it. So I'm guessing it has a lot more miles than uh, 1,224. There's no way that's accurate. <laughs> But that, we've got the air filter for it in the truck as well. And then a aftermarket carburetor to go on it. Right now we've got the stock carb on it that's been rebuilt, supposedly. And then we've got a new starter in there too, you can see. I'm guessing maybe a full spark plug, something along those lines. Also, I noticed that there's a bunch of gasket maker around here, this cover. And I think when he replaced the starter, he had to take this cover off. So maybe he pinched a wire going to the pickup coil and that produces spark. So, I don't know. We'll look into it and see, but it seems to shift good into gear. So that's basically why I bought it. And uh, these Polaris 500s, everyone likes them, so we'll see. Also, it comes with a plow, which is pretty nice, which doesn't work. <laughs> this thing is locked up. This thing's frozen tight right here. There is a grease fitting right here that you can lube up, so hopefully we can pack that full of grease and get this plow to work. All right, without further ado, let's start jumping into it and see if we can get this thing to run. All right, first thing I want to do is get the solenoid hooked up correctly. So right now we've got a red positive wire going to one of these leads. We need a negative wire going to here to ground. So we need this terminal to go to ground. So we're going to hook up a wire and hook that up. Everything else looks like it's hooked up properly. So. Let's do that first, because right now, you can see the start button doesn't work. And uh, he temporarily put a wire right here to ground, and it worked. All right, we made up this wire with one of these attachments on one end, like that, and then this one on the other end. I'm going to stick one end of the wire to the terminal on the solenoid. Then one end to ground. I'll just ground it out right there. Tighten up the terminal. That one's tight. Ones for the battery are tight. 
Alright, let's see what happens when we push the start button now. We have low battery, so keep that in mind. Let's just see. <laughs> Does nothing. Alright, we've got the jumper hooked up. Let's see what happens now. See, it just spins like that. Looks like the starter isn't engaging. I think it's this thing causing problems. It's like too much friction. So let's turn that off. We'll take off that cover and see how bad that is underneath there. But it's almost like the starter quits because it's got too much friction right here. Huh, that's not good. All right, to get the clutch cover off, you need to take off all the bolts right here. I just did that. 3 8 inch uh, sockets. And then up here, same thing. Actually, this was 7 16 socket for the bottom. These are 3 8 I'll just come right out like so. See how bad the clutch is. Hopefully it's still usable. Otherwise we're gonna be into buying a clutch for it. All right, let's see if we can get the cover off now. It doesn't look too bad in there. There's neutral. Just a little rust on there. Nothing broken off so far. Still pushes in, that's good. The belt honestly doesn't look too bad. This is definitely the original belt, probably. Since it says Polaris on it. Let's see if it turns over now. Nope. That might be why it doesn't have spark. It's because it's not turning over fast enough. Huh, what the heck? Alright, well, let's get the gas tank off, get the spark plug out of there, and just check for spark, and then this cover needs to come off for sure, because something's going on with the, the starter gear, and it looks like it was messed with because, look what I found right here, in this mess of parts down here. <laughs> So it looks like maybe this isn't engaging it. See how that springs out like that? So maybe there's something going on with that. Apparently he replaced that part. So I'm guessing it's like spinning, but not catching, is what it sounds like to me. Hear the starter spinning. Let's see. Yeah, it just continues to spin. All right, let's get all the plastics off and uh, check out that spark plug. Quick check on the inside of the plug cover. You can see where it was rubbing all the way around right there. So, it's either this clutch has a bunch of play in it and the crank is bad. No. There's no up and down play in the clutch because sometimes these cranks can just get really bad and then have tons of play. So then when it spins, it gets higher up and cuts into that cover. But not feeling any play in the clutch at all, which we got lucky with. <laughs> all right, I really hate Polaris for this reason. Um, the gas tanks are like impossible to get out of here without taking off all the plastics, the front rack. Basically everything needs to come off to take this gas tank out which you need to change out the spark plug. <laughs> so, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense, but I can reach my arm in there, kinda, to get to the spark plug. So that's what we're gonna do. I already got it kinda loose, but it's really tight fit. Let's see if I can get that out of here. Poor design by Polaris, and 
I feel like they continue to have poor designs with everything. And they're just, they just seem cheaply made to me. I don't know why. Just compared to Honda and other brands. I don't know if they use cheaper parts or what. But it just doesn't seem quality. Let's get this plug out of here. plug looks decent pretty big gap there there we go that's more like it looks like it was running fine maybe a little lean let's see if we have spark here ground this to the engine here Now it turns over fine with the spark plug out. Doesn't look like anything's happening. Let's see if you push the override in. Try a different plug. Like I said, maybe it's a fall plug. All right, we've got a different plug to try. I doubt this is gonna make a difference, but we'll try it. <laughs> Gotta try the easy stuff first. All right, ground that out. Nothing. Not a single. coming from there and the kill switch works because I've got the kill switch on now pushing the button that doesn't work let's try opening the throttle a little bit see if that works nothing All right, we're getting no spark at the spark plug so what I did was take off the boot and uh, previous owners they clipped a little bit of the wire back so I just checked to make sure that he did that and that looked good and then I put the wire without the boot directly on the engine and turned it over and still no spark so the boot and the wire should be fine so we've got the spark plug the boot and the wire are all fine now let's check the wire going to the coil which is this white and blue one right there we're gonna ground that out directly to the frame right there and check for spark if we don't have spark there, that means something before the coil is the issue. All right, turning it over. We have no spark, so it's not the coil. All right, now we're going before the coil right here. There's a black and red wire. You can see it right there, black and red wire. We're hooking that up to ground to see if we have spark coming from the pickup coil over here. So it looks like when we turn it over, we don't have any spark. Nothing. So I think it's going to be underneath the cover is our problem. So we're going to come down here and we've got to take off this cover. And I'm guessing the guy put that the starter gear in there on too. So, I guess without further ado, let's take off that cover, see what's going on. All right, we can see the footwell is already off of here. So, somebody was recently in this cover. It looks like there's only like one bolt holding it on. There we 
There's one. I guess there's a couple holding in that. Not many though. Looks like the guy I forgot to replace most of the bolts here. There's only three bolts holding that whole thing up. That's not good. Gotta be more than that. Wow. Alright, that's all she wrote. Just three bolts at the top <laughs> holding that thing on. Yeah, came right off. That's just beautiful. Oh man. Look in there. It's really corroded. <laughs> Looks like something was knocking around in there. Wow, yeah. Um, I think the pickup coil is junk right there. I think it got hit. I'm guessing that is junk. <laughs> I think that's the culprit. Here's the starter gear. So that pops out and spins this thing. And I'm thinking because the cover wasn't on, it doesn't hold that tight in place. So it wasn't uh, spinning this thing properly. Wonder which way that spins. I think this way. I'm not sure. But yeah, that needs to be pushed in firmly for that to work. We can take this thing out. Let's see if there's any damage to this thing. See that? That rotates around and comes out like that. And I don't know if these teeth are supposed to be angled off like that. Let me look at the old one and just see if they're supposed to be like that. It almost looks like it's been grinding. All right, looks like the old one was like that too. So the teeth are kind of angled down. So it doesn't look like that's a problem. Hmm. There's the close up of the pickup coil right here. You can see how it's coming out like that. That's supposed to be flush with that metal piece and it's supposed to rub up against that piece of metal right at the top there. And that looks like that's like chipped off or something. Yeah, see how it's ground down. Oh, that's not good. But yeah, it's supposed to go by there and you can see it's not gonna be contacting it at all down there. So let's get that pickup coil out of there. See what that looks like. It's kinda hard to see it, but there's the the bolt for it right there. We gotta try to get out. <laughs> and it's kinda tricky. Because it's in a weird position. I think there's two of them. Yeah. Hmm. We might have to take out the flywheel to get it. So I bent back the pickup coil right there that goes onto the flywheel. And uh, we're just gonna see if it has spark. We're gonna have to replace it either way. But uh, I tried getting the flywheel off and that thing is just frozen on there. So we're gonna see if this one works first before attempting to replace it. Cause it didn't look like it was in bad shape other than it was just bent back. And this is what I found in the bottom near the flywheel. So that was getting rubbed off, you can see. That was getting thrown apart in there. I don't know where that bolt came from, but. Let's just see if we've got spark now. If anything. Are we getting anything? coil out of there. Aha, check this out. Got spark now, baby. 
All right. <laughs> I just put that pickup coil a little bit closer to that flywheel. Now I've got spark. <laughs> Let's see if we twist in the spark plug if it uh, can still crank over. All right, we've got the gas hooked up. Let's see if the sink fires up. We'll put the choke on and hope for the best. Um, the low powered battery charger right here does not crank it over. It just spins the starter, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Oh yeah, sounds good too. Oh baby. That's awesome. That is amazing. Idling perfectly, no knocking at all. Sounds really good. Let's see if the headlights work now. Yeah, lights still don't work. Well, looks like we fixed the problem. That's sweet. So we've got the back brake to fix yet, the lights to fix, and then we got to get everything back on this thing. But, uh... Yeah, everything's smooth, really smooth. It's running great. No smoking. Let's give it a little throttle here. Now that we got this thing to run good, let's start working on the other stuff. We've got to get this cover bent out a little bit further, so it doesn't rub. So what we're going to do with this is just um, melt this cover and push it out a little bit, just so that that doesn't rub anymore. I'm not really sure why that's rubbing. It doesn't look like it's bowed or anything, but yeah, kind of weird. We'll heat that up, push it out a little bit, and hopefully it stops rubbing. I'm just gonna inspect the clutch one more time just to make sure that it's all good. Just kind of see. I wonder why that would be rubbing. Nothing looks bad on it. So, kind of a mystery there. But uh, yeah, let's just get everything put back together here. And that we gotta get this plow to work too. So this thing is pretty solid right here. There is a grease fitting on here. Let's just see if that can get pumped full of grease here. Trading oil down here if you can. Hit that with the hammer a couple times. <laughs> it 
It's not budging. All right, that's not good. <laughs> We're gonna keep trying. We'll try to get that free, but I'm guessing it's just welded right to it from the rust. All right, that's a no-go for that thing. That thing is just stuck on there so good. We might have to use some heat, so um, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Let's work on this cover, trying to get this thing to look a little bit better. So we're gonna take some heat and just try to bend this back. Here. Take a razor blade. Just kind of scrape all the access off. All right, covers back on. I started it up, and it doesn't grind too bad, so we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad at all. You can barely hear it. So that's all fixed. Let's work on this thing a little bit more. We're gonna get the torch out and heat that up, see if we can get that to free up. Still can't get that. All right, so I cannot get this thing to free up. <laughs> we uh, heated it up with the torch and it didn't budge at all. So that must be like really, really, really stuck on there. Let's work on getting these lights working. You can see this one was all like melted. So let's try to get this off here and see what that bulb looks like. And then same with the back one. Let's just see if these bulbs are busted back here. You can see this one too. I'm wondering if they ran it without a battery at one point. It just busted all the lights. But one is completely melted, so. What's going on with that? Yeah, so one of these is busted. You can see. Right there, right there is busted. One filament is still in there though. See? So maybe it'll work if we hit the brake light. But yeah, that needs a new bulb, as I suspected. Also, the bottom lights right here don't work either. So I wonder if all the bulbs are out of them. All right, we got the cover off. You can see the headlight wasn't even plugged in. I'm guessing because this thing like started on fire. But um, yeah, I think the speedometer hooks up into here. The cable for it was off of it. Let's see, where's the cable for it? Let's see if we can get that plugged back in. All right, we're gonna see if the speedo gauge is working. We're gonna hook up the drill to it and spin it. Let's see what happens. Maybe something's broken. Alright, that speedo gauge is working. So we should be able to hook the wire to it, and it should work. So here is the cable. So we just have to hook that up into there. And uh, the speedo should work again. Alright, we got the voltmeter hooked up to the light. 
Let's just see what we get for a reading when we turn on the lights. We've got a low battery right now, but we should have some type of bolt to show up when I turn on the key here. All right, we're gonna go to low and high. So we get 6.2 volts, so yeah, we're getting voltage. So I think we just have a burnt out bulb. So new bulbs we need for at least the headlight right here and the tail light so far. All right, looking down here, you can see the filament in there is busted as well. So these need all new bulbs. So somebody must have ran it without a battery and now uh, the voltage spiked and then burnt all the bulbs out. So at least we know why. Now we can order up all brand new bulbs for it and the lights should work. So while we're in here, before we put the cupboard back on, check the coolant. All right, coolant's topped off. Awesome. Now we'll quick check the oil. All right, there. Oh yeah, oil looks brand new. Sweet. All right, so oil and coolant check out. I think what we're gonna do next is get everything back together and then just see if it goes in reverse, forward, and low, and test out the gears because I don't know if the transmission is good or not. Well, it's all back together. Let's see if it moves. Yeah, it doesn't want to move. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Alright, we got the shifting fix. I had to change the linkage um, between the transmission and the shifter right here. It was just a little bit off and it wasn't going out of the low gear. So I fixed that as well. And now it goes through all the gears pretty smoothly. Runs good, drives good. Um, there's no issues with that. The plow, I cannot get that to budge. Um, that's frozen. So we're going to have to leave the plow off of it for now. And then uh, the lights, we have to order up. Let's go test this thing out and uh, take it for a little spin. Things running great. All right, so far this thing's running way better than I expected it to run. Going through all the gears nicely. Sounds pretty good. Clutch isn't rubbing too bad.
video doesn't work, but uh, that's okay. The cable must be broken. We'll test out the 4x4, four four, see if that's working. I haven't heard the fan come on either. Woo -hoo. Gotta be going like 50. go through the tall grass here. The trail made through here already. Probably ticks everywhere. Turn the 4x4 on. See what that does for us. Pretty muddy through here. Feels like it's working. This one's a little deeper. Oh yeah, baby. She's working. Four by four is working. It's gotta be water up here, I think. Oh. This is pretty bad in here. This is pretty muddy. No problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. That's awesome. Things are running great. Well, that wraps up the first ride on the Polaris Sportsman 500. Runs pretty good. No issues that I can see. 4x4 works good. Front brake works. Rear brake does not work. I'm going to have to work on that a little bit, but um, that shouldn't be too bad. I think you just bleed it right here, back here. So, but yeah, it uh, is definitely a beater quad <laughs> but uh, at least it runs good and then the plow is over here I might work on it a little bit more try to get the plow to work it's a pretty nice plow cycle country plow made for Polaris so a little rusty but would be pretty nice for plowing snow but yeah that wraps up today's video hope you guys enjoyed I'm um, trying to figure out this no spark situation. It ended up being that pickup coil. I'm not sure how that pickup coil got bent in there, but it looks like maybe something was dropped in there and it spun around and busted it. So that was the issue. And anyway, we guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video. And until next time, we are out.